Hey guys, I got a uh, quick one here for you today. Now quick in my terms is usually about 25 minutes, but I'm going to do my best to dial this back and time lapse and cut out all the BS, but we'll see. Basically the premise of this video comes from something I've always heard, and that is to use a specific low alloy welding filler metal or filler rod or whatever you want to call it when joining dissimilar metals such as a higher carbon steel or an alloy steel to a mild steel for example. This is important when building these swords because I do use different types of steel for the hilt versus the pommel versus the blade and so forth so I've had good luck using this low alloy filler but I've never actually tested it so that's what we're here to do. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going to happen but we're about to find out. So what I'm going to do today is test exactly that. I have this Blue Demon filler metal here. This is low alloy. This is ER80SD2 in case anybody cared. I'm using the same wire thickness uh, on both here. This is 30 thousandths. This is also 30 thousandths. Over here is, I don't know if you can see this, ER70S6. This is probably the most common mild steel filler wire on the market. Sometimes I see uh, ER70S2, I believe they're very similar, both very common. I've used hundreds of pounds of this stuff. Over here for our test metal, we have a piece of AR500. This is Hard Ox brand. This is a medium carbon alloy steel. And over here, this is actually a extremely rusty piece of metal I found in the scrap bin. It's actually a test nameplate from my office that I had etched, and uh, when I cleaned it off, I discovered the uh, the old etching from probably two years ago or so. This is just plain mild steel. I believe it is A36, plain old generic, cheapest possible steel you can buy. Quarter inch thick. That's quarter inch thick. I'm going to use exactly the same weld settings between the two filler metals I have over here. I'm even going to try to make the travel time on my weld exactly the same to try to get the most similar weld possible. After that, it's time to hit it with the old five pound uh, cross peen hammer here. I guess I'll just see if one weld breaks before the other or maybe bends more dramatically. I guess we'll have to see how it goes. I'll play it by ear, but I suspect they're going to be remarkably similar despite all of the conventional warnings about using this specific filler metal over this one. But who knows? I might be surprised today. Alright, that's about it. This is the low alloy side. It took me about 30 seconds to make that weld. And I tried to do the same over here. Looks very similar, I think. I kept them between 30 and 35 seconds, I would say. So, just about the same amount of heat into both of them. I'm just going to let them cool down now, and I'm going to hit them that direction. I don't really want to bend the plate or bend the weld. I want to see if that weld just kind of cracks right off and the piece goes flying. So we'll see shortly. All right, that was uh, 10 hits with the little blacksmithing hammer and then 15 with the sledgehammer as I realized I wasn't really doing any damage. Basically, I only bent it the tiniest little bit. You can see the hits on the face there. A few went high as well, but obviously this isn't moving. All right, since that test was a complete failure, I welded the plate to the edge of the table here because the clamps just keep flying right off. And I'm gonna hit this steel from the back side, it should be easier to break that way and see if I can at least get a baseline. This is the ER70S6, the uh, mild steel filler wire right there. Mm -hmm. 
Gotta say, my arms are getting awfully tired now, but looks like we succeeded in breaking that weld. It took seven hits with the sledgehammer. That's uh, it actually still held on there, but just barely. There we go. Looks like the weld bead itself is actually what failed, not the base metal. Interesting. All right, here we go, round two with the ER80 S2 welding filler rod. This is the low alloy. I broke off the ER70 S6 this side with seven hits, so theoretically, if this side makes it eight or higher, then maybe it's stronger possibly with my completely unscientific testing all right well that's it i got 28 hits in four times as many as the other side and i'm giving up this thing isn't going anywhere and even if it does the test is clearly conclusive at this point. In fact, the welds that hold this plate to the table are actually starting to give up as well. So I guess that's it. Low alloy steel if you're joining something with medium high carbon content to something else like mild steel, it does make a difference. Now having said that, seven hits with the sledgehammer on the backside of a weld, the weakest point basically is still pretty substantial quite strong but clearly this is better so i guess i'll just keep using this lower alloy steel it's worth it just in case you thought i was pulling any punches there i just realized that my welding table has separated here the bolts uh, came out uh, right here and this top plate actually separated from this plate as you can see they used to be stuck together and actually even lifting up here so the whole thing kind of went back and up that was quite a bit of force I'm going to redo this test just for sanity's sake I'll just weld it upside down like that on the same plate and I'll try to knock it off again and see if my results were comparable or not so normal filler wire this is the ER70 S6 and let's see what happens. What I'm also going to do here is a mild steel plate to a, another mild steel plate using the normal mild steel filler. So basically the most common basic weld possible. I'm going to test it just to kind of have a baseline because theoretically that should be quite strong. I'm not sure what will happen but I'm still confused about how this weld broke so easily. All right, so we've got the same plate. I just turned it upside down. I've welded it with the low alloy filler. Just a reminder, that's mild steel. That is AR500 hard ox. We're gonna do the same exact experiment again. I'm just showing the weld in case any uh, real welders wanna critique it and tell me how good or bad it is. But uh, I think it's pretty decent for the purposes of this demonstration. Over here, I have welded this time mild steel to mild steel with the mild steel filler, the ER70 S6. Again, well it looks pretty good in my opinion. It would, it should hold. I guess we're going to find out very shortly. Alright, this is retesting Hardox AR500 joined to mild steel with mild steel filler wire ER70 S6. All right, that took about 15 hits or so. I'll have to review the footage. There were a couple glancing blows in there, at least two full misses and a couple glancing blows. So I would say we're in the same vicinity as before where it took, I think, seven or eight to break this off. It actually didn't break it off totally uh, the first time. This did break it off. 
Uh, so I could probably add a, another hit to the original test, just to be fair. All right, this time is mild steel welded to mild steel with the mild steel filler, the ER7D S6. Let's see what happens. All right, there we have it. Oh, I didn't actually quite break it, but it's flat on there. I can't, I can't even get a finger under it. That was seven hits. It looks like the weld tore. Uh, interesting. All right, one final test here. This time, mild steel to mild steel, but using the ER80 SD2 low alloy filler. Let's see if it's just a matter of the filler metal being exceptionally tough. And that's what's making the difference in these tests. Alright, so that was 30 hits. Some weaker and stronger than others. I didn't break it off completely. It just flattened it. I, uh, I straightened this back out with a pry bar and you can actually see in there there's just a little bit of weld left on here right there you can, you can see you can see air over there and over there but uh, it's still so strong I have to use a pry bar to get this up and uh, a hammer to just bend it back into place this, it's impossible to bend this with my hand not even close whereas the mile still filler wire uh, once I had kind of knocked it down I literally just kind of wiggled it free and broke the plates off with no trouble all right finally here we are retesting mild steel to AR500 hard ox using the ER80 SD2 low alloy filler this is the weld pretty decent I just want to make sure this is as tough as the original test All right, 28 hits, exact same scenario as the first time, exact same number of hits, and the angle is nearly identical. So that filler metal is just really tough. I'm gonna keep hitting it and see how many hits it really takes. I suspect as it bends more, it'll actually take only a few more hits before it goes over. Let's find out. Well, that's it. My original assessment of it needing at least 50 hits to knock over was clearly wrong. Uh, after I hit 28, I probably got another 5 hits in and it just kind of snapped off. And again, you can see the base metal just kind of tore straight out. The weld is all still there, which is pretty typical. The welds are usually stronger than the base metal. So it's actually the st original steel itself that fails in these situations. So, conclusions. I have no idea what I'm talking about and I have no idea what I'm doing. So let's talk about the results. I did three tests with the ER70 S6 mild steel filler wire. I did mild to mild, or rather mild steel plate to mild steel plate. It took seven hits to break the weld. I did mild steel to the Hardoff AR500 plate twice. It took 7 hits and 15 hits. And the 15 hits basically should have been a little bit lower. I had at least 3 really glancing blows or total misses. So For the ER80 SD2, the low alloy filler steel, I did 3 more tests. I did mild steel plate to mild steel plate. That took 30 hits to break. I did mild steel to the Hardox AR500 plate. That took 28 hits the first time before I gave up. It didn't completely break it. And the second time it was 32, I believe, and that did break it. So I was initially perplexed by these findings. Uh, as I had mentioned in the beginning of the video, the myth or whatever you want to call it, the general rule that I've always heard was to use this ER80 SD2 low alloy when joining different alloys of steel, high carbon steel, so forth. 
Um, and the reason was simply that the well would be brittle if you didn't. I found no evidence that the wells were brittle. What I think I can conclude from these experiments is simply the mild steel filler wire is just weaker than the low alloy filler wire, period. It didn't really seem to matter what material I used. It took roughly four times as many hits to break the low alloy welds versus the mild steel welds. Now, when you think about this, it makes total sense. If you know anything about filler wire specifications, the ER70 stands for 70 KSI of tensile strength. I think KSI stands for kilopounds per square inch. It's basically just a measure of tensile strength of a material. And the ER80 is, of course, 80 K KSI. Now, I wouldn't expect 400% stronger you know, performance, but it should be stronger, right? Uh, so why doesn't everybody just use ER80 SD2, low alloy, for everything? It was significantly stronger across every test I could try. Uh, and the real answer is, it's just price. I looked up my Amazon orders and the mild steel, the ER70S6, was 18 17 16 dollars for a big spool, a 10 pound spool. And then the same brand in the low alloy, the ER80SD2, was 42 43 44 dollars. So, about two and a half times the price. So, it works a lot better, but it costs a lot more. Big shocker, right? Who would have guessed? So what's the real conclusion here? Use the more expensive, much stronger filler metal if you need a stronger weld, basically. It's as simple as that. Uh, I suppose I may have some professional welders watching this video. I'm not a professional welder. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm totally self-taught. I don't work in the industry. Nothing. So maybe there's other reasons why you would pick one filler metal versus the other, but from this test, from a strength performance standpoint, it's pretty clear what the results are. One little side note, I suspect that the reasoning behind the low alloy filler metal being recommended for alloy steels, high carbon steels, and so forth, is simply just to match the weld strength to the parent material. You've got a stronger base, why not have a stronger weld? You don't want the weld to be the weak point. So, uh, that it kind of makes sense from that perspective. When you're dealing with just mild steel to mild steel, you can use a mild steel filler wire and, you know, all three things will be the same strength, basically. Having the weld four times stronger than the base metal doesn't really get you anything. The base metal is just still going to fail first. Great. Maybe it's just simply a matter of more safety if you're not 100% confident on your welds or just a little bigger margin of error. Fill me in in the comments if you've got better ideas than I do. But that's all I got for today, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe or Pennywise will get you. And uh, I'll see you next time.